So, I just got out of bed. I don't know, it's like two in the afternoon. I think it's pretty safe to say that I'm dying at this point. Um, I've, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to tell my story to anybody that's new and hasn't heard anything about my story. I've got to try to present my story to uh, at least a couple Canadians to show. Uh, I don't know if there's any way to get me any help. I At this point, I don't think I'm going to survive, but I would like to use my story to advocate, to tell people what's happening to us here. I am, you know, this is not just a story about withdrawal, about drug withdrawal, about uh, benzodiazepine withdrawal, or... You know, the the withdrawal seriously, seriously harmed me. And giving me these drugs long term has maybe even killed me. But there's other things happening here. You know, like some undiagnosed illnesses with me and the inability to get medical care and uh, God, what the medical system is doing to us, how we, we were being treated, why I should be sitting at home dying and no one's advocating for me, no one's fighting for me. What what has happened here is insane. People are dying and no one cares. People are dying because I don't even know because of I I don't even understand what has happened to our medical system our and I'm sure it's well it seems like only half the people out there understand the other people feel like they're getting the medical help they need The gaslighting and covering up and uh, lying and and not getting people the help they need and and we lack specialists and and they pretend that we don't lack the specialists that we need and we lack specialists that are able to diagnose various stuff. I. I truly don't feel like I've been properly diagnosed on many levels. I don't care that they've done the tests that they've done. They've done a lot of tests on me, uh, respiratory and uh, and heart tests, but they've not they've not done enough. And um, like, gosh, I'm sitting here. I just got up and I'm sitting here watching my oxygen drop. No one has ever tested that. Um, there have been times here I've been in, in critical condition and I should have been in hospital and nobody nobody cared. This is not okay that we're doing to the, doing this to people. I've worked most of my life paid my taxes as a Canadian. How can we do this to our own people? And 
the thing is, everybody's watching this happen. It's not like I'm some criminal and some horrible drug addict and and I'm living, you know, even if I was living on welfare all my life or this or that, I've worked all my life, uh, uh, paid my taxes, made my own way through this world without, you know, a family fighting for me. I've been injured again and again here. I need medical help. I fought so hard to get help. I'm in Canada, for God's sake. We've got Americans talking about moving here so they can get have better health care. They've got specialists in Canada that we don't have. And, and our Canadians are always, you know, our Canadians are going south to find qualified medical care to have surgery. I'm in trouble here. I don't know. You know, I'm sleeping two hours a night. I can no longer advocate for myself. You know, I've got a serious, you know, life-threatening um, insomnia thing happening here that was patient profiled and misdiagnosed and minimized. And then I got severe, you know, then, I mean, this insomnia thing was killing me, and I had to stop working. I had to agree to a mental health diagnosis in order to get uh, – I had to quit my full-time job, and I had to agree to a mental health diagnosis to get disability for the part-time job that I moved to. I had to agree – to a mental health diagnosis that I don't have in order to get, in order for a doctor to sign papers for disability, which is sickening in itself. And then I had to stop working at my part-time job because I'm not getting, I'm not sleeping. I was sleeping five hours a night for years, four hours a night for years three hours a night for five years. At that point, I became suicidal. I've lost virtually everything. Now I've been sleeping one to two hours since December 2017. And I'm almost at three years of sleeping approximately two hours a night, and I'm dying. So I'm almost at three years of sleeping two hours a night, I was in withdrawal for 20 months, so I'm I'm extremely sick from that. That almost killed me numerous times, weaning off of three benzodiazepines they had me on for decades, for 40 years. And that almost took my life many times in many ways. Severe apnea, it's done something to my heart. My feet were turning blue for months. Something's wrong with my breathing. Something's seriously wrong with my breathing. My oxygen levels are not stable. My oxygen's gone down to 77 while I'm awake. I'm in Canada. I need help. It's done something to my neck, my spine. Um... <sighs> My chest hurts. It's hard to... Something's wrong with my breathing. My breathing's not normal. I have Chiari malformation, airless download syndrome. Now, you know, now since this this drug injury, I have airless download syndrome, uh, craniocervical instability, I'm told. 
that I likely have that, but there's no one to diagnose. There's something wrong with my spine. There's no one to di diagnose. I'm sure there's my mitochondria damage. There's no one to diagnose. There's no one to properly diagnose my carry malformation. Uh, degenerative disc disease, fibromyalgia, uh, ME, um, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, <laughs> I'm in Canada and I'm begging and screaming for medical help and I can't get any and I'm going to die or we're forced to suicide. I'm so traumatized. I'm so, so traumatized by what's been doing, done to me here. The stuff that doctors will discuss with us, and then they will write a report to the family doctor that completely doesn't reflect what they said to us during the appointment. It's just unbelievable. There is no advocacy here for patients. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. We're dying and no one cares. I shouldn't have to die when I'm this young. I've done nothing wrong. I've worked all my life. I've been a good person all my life. And my life is being taken from me. The things that have happened to me, I'm supposed to shut my mouth and not talk about the medical errors, the negligence, the mistakes. I'm supposed to keep my mouth shut and just sit here and die. I'm not going to. I'm not going to be quiet anymore. <laughs>